Hey Vikes, welcome back to the last episode of Sagas for this semester. The theme for this show is joy. Joy has a different meaning for everyone. In this show, we will explore a student who found joy in an unexpected place, a group that is trying to spread joy during the season, and a new addition to the high school. Christmas is the time of year where joy is seen in a variety of places. In our first story, a student at Seaman has recently found joy in a way that was quite unexpected from him, his love for his faith. Senior James Sadler was no great kid. In fact, he fell more along the lines of your typical troublemaking student. I was, I was kind of a bully, I'll admit it. Uh, I wasn't very nice to people all the time. And like, ever since I've like joined my faith and like uh, become closer to Christ and stuff, I've like started to think about others more than myself and like putting other people before me. So like, uh, I would go out with my friends and I don't know, just, do stuff that probably shouldn't have done, but uh, I noticed how other people were always so like positive and everything, and they were always so nice, even when like you can tell when somebody really doesn't like somebody, but they would still try to be nice to people, and I saw that, and I've always wanted to be like that, I just never really was, and so I saw other people starting to act like that, and I, I just I wanted to be like that. I think it's pretty unusual for a, a teenager or kid in high school to, to join the church because they have all these things they need to do and so like adding another thing like church that takes up a lot of time and we're, we're doing a lot of church activities like throughout the week and stuff, it seems like a hard transition but I feel like he seems a lot happier and uh, all the things he does, it's, I don't know, they're, he just seems like he's doing it with like more of like a, I don't know, he has more passion for it. But he's found something to change him for the better, his faith. I know what's right and wrong now, and I like, I know why I don't want to do those things, because uh, it damages me. And uh, all the commandments and everything that we have, they uh, help us to like better ourselves. And I understand that now more. And uh, that's really what helps me uh, become a better person. And then when he started being closer with Lawrence and the Budge family and just everyone in the church and started going, he's just changed so much for the better. Like, and I've seen such a growth in him and his personality and him and just as a person in general. I, th I think the biggest difference and change that I've seen in him is just, he's, he's just a little more full. He has more joy. He's more happy. He's more just emotionally there and just because... I think it just really boils down to him being happier and just finding something that he's really loved and fallen in love with. And he has chosen to share this joy with those he loves. He really just wanted to share that with other people and so he immediately turned to his family, his father and his sister. Um, and it's been awesome to see that and see them all to grow together in their faith. Well, I think it's affected them a lot and it's changed their lives completely. Um, she's never been to, into really going to church or anything like that. And now that she sees me going to church, she wants to be a part of it. She sees how it's made me happier and she wants that too. I think he's just kind of set an example and I think that people see the change that's happened in him. I just know that like his influence on me has really affected me and that's why I made the decision to get baptized. Along with bringing his family together, he has found a lifelong home. I feel happier now doing the things that I do and just like, uh, I feel like I'm closer to God and to Christ now because of the things that I do. So I feel like uh, it'll be a lifetime commitment for me. He just cares about not only himself, but everyone else around him at the same time. It's really awesome. It really just helps you with whatever you're going through at that time in your life. And for James is right now. With his growing love for his faith, James hopes to lead a new life, bringing joy to not only himself, but others. Our next story involves the joy of giving. During Christmas time, groups and organizations normally buy gifts for families in need. This is called Adopt a Family. The local 4-H club has found a way this Christmas season to bring joy to families in need by a program called Adopt a Family. Adopt a Family is a program that was started by the Christmas Bureau that uh, many local organizations like Topeka North Outreach and uh, local churches have adopted just to help a few families out um, during Christmas time who can't afford to give Christmas to their children or um, really provide with um, what their kids would like during Christmas season. 
all of the families that are on the Christmas Bureau financially need help at Christmas time. And so we know we are helping families that um, maybe couldn't provide a Christmas for their kids otherwise. And so our kids can then shop and give back to the community by just having a few gifts under the tree for those kids that maybe wouldn't have a Christmas otherwise. Community service is a common theme for many 4-H activities. So Indian Creek 4-H Club is a local 4-H club here in Topeka and every year we adopt one or two families to uh, help provide Christmas to kids who can't afford it. Our club has been participating with the Topeka North Outreach Christmas Bureau for almost 10 years now and every year our kids set a budget and shop um, for families with a small list that they provide. Um, it's a great community service project because um, all of our kids, they're different ages, so they can all participate in this community service project. We usually get together and at our November meeting we set a budget, we uh, then just set a shopping date, and members of our club then will go out to like Walmart and buy some gifts on a list that Topeka North Outreach gives us with a couple of family members to purchase gifts for and then we bring them to Topeka North Outreach and Topeka North Outreach will disperse them amongst the family members and deliver them for us so that everybody can see them Christmas. Kids of all ages can get involved in 4-H. We do this because it's a great way for all the members in our club to give back whether you're 18 or 6, it doesn't really matter how old you are. It just takes a little bit to get involved with everything that um, is about the Christmas season, just giving back to someone who's less fortunate than you. And with a club like ours, we're very big, so we can afford to help um, several like families and family members. So if you can help, why not? It's a service. We're a service-based organization, so if we help kids out, we're serving our community and we're serving kids just like us who just don't get the same opportunities. Everyone enjoys shopping for families that are less fortunate than them. Because we use the Topeka North Outreach Christmas Bureau, we know that the families we're shopping for are going to be local and from our um, nearby communities. So a lot of the kids know that um, they're reaching somebody um, close by. The kids in our club have said that they really enjoy this project because it allows them to shop for someone else, think of someone else, um, and provide something for a family in need. Um, they really enjoy shopping for the kids and the parents and knowing that what they're doing is making a difference. If you are interested in helping others in need, you can contact the Christmas Bureau or the Topeka North Outreach. Our next story shows joy in animals. Have you seen a yellow lab walking around the halls of Seaman High and wondering where she came from? Emma, the dog, is a therapy dog that comes to the high school on Fridays. Well, she had been trained as a teacher. My sister-in-law was blind and she had a, used her as a seeing eye dog. And because she was going into the schools, my sister-in-law is a teacher of the visually impaired, she was duly trained to be also a therapy dog. Everyone's usually very excited and they come to her. I, just walking down now from the hallway, I could hear a couple kids go, there goes Emma, hi Emma. And uh, people are excited to have her around. Um, they constantly would like to pet her and touch her. Um, and what's interesting that I found is that when she has a real good read on people and when they're upset, she can sense it even when we're not able to sense it. And she'll even go and put her head on their knee to kind of come and the, they'll start stroking her. And what I found with kids and with adults also is that they'll, you'll watch their behavior. All of a sudden it starts to kind of relax and, and she just sits there and is just part of the, the, their support for them. Well, I pet her, talk to her. I do get a ball. I've got a little uh, bouncy ball and I'll kind of throw it out down the hall and she'll get it. And she won't bring it back to me. She brings it back in here to my office and then sets and waits on me. So I don't know where she learned that. She's a very intelligent dog. 
Pleasant Hill, she goes over there four days a week, and what they say is they see the staff happier and the students happier in the class. And in fact, we have kids that their routine is to take her for a walk or whatever, and it's an encouragement for them to come to school because they, they want to be able to work, work with Emma and provide services to her. So I've seen those positive things happen. Well, uh, just students stopping and uh, saying, oh, look, and you know, what's her name? And, but I, I think the real setting I haven't seen when the therapy, when a student's upset and a dog can just kind of soothe everything. So I have not seen that yet, but I've heard stories. I think because she's so open, she does, she's not judgmental, and a lot of times people think that, um, that maybe they're different or that people don't accept them. Um, and she, she doesn't, it, it doesn't make any difference to her what people look like, what they act like, whatever. Um, they can be mean to her and she'll just come back the next time and thinks that they're her best friend. And so, you know, I think the joy is that she is, um, that she doesn't, have any discrimination of anyone or anything. I think dogs, uh, especially when she comes in, mm -hmm. she kind of makes a right turn as she's coming down the hall and she wants to come in and so I kind of make a big deal out of it. She comes over and tails knocking everything off the walls and I don't know, it's just friendly. I guess she's therapy for everybody, even me. Make sure to go check out Emma's Twitter page for updates of her daily adventures. Thanks for watching the third episode of Sagas. From all of us here that produce Sagas, we hope you have a joyful holiday season. We will be back with another episode next semester.